All right, so this is my little intro slide that I give for pretty much every presentation I give is what is human design? And this is basically your energetic blueprint and it's based off ancient and modern science, including astrology, the I Ching, Kabbalah, chakras and mixed in with epigenetics and quantum physics. Human design can give you um, inquiries about yourself, a journey for self-discovery, tells you how to make decisions and how to lead a more fulfilling life. It kind of gives you an idea of how to interact with other people, what's your purpose is, what career you could possibly go into, what your spiritual gifts are. If you have health issues, how does that work on your energetic blueprint? And also with life cycles, it can also help you understand your relationships through something called uh, connection charts, which is a video I have on my YouTube channel that talks about that. If you want to get to know your children. And then of course, like Kandara mentioned, it does do pets as well. That's actually called mammalian design, not human design, and it's different. So if you were to watch this video and get some insights, if you were to pull a chart for your dog or cat or horse or any mammal, um, I do believe they have, they also have reptilian design too. So you can do it for like a lizard, but it's also different. Um, but that is, it will not be the same as this. There's only 15 gays versus for humans, there's 64. One thing that I really do will say about human design that I like, and I also do study astrology and uh, the gene keys, which the gene keys are basically the gates in human design, but on steroids is the simplest terms. Um, the Richard Rudd focuses more on the specific gates and how those energies work versus the overall chart. And what I do like about human design though, versus let's say astrology, which I'm a huge fan of, but one thing is that it's very structured. Like if you guys know about astrology at all, like when you go into astrology, there's different house systems. So based if you choose like, like for me, I like the Pleiades system. So that's what I use, right? So if the if you go and use the whole house system, your chart might be different based on whatever house system you use. When it comes to human design, your chart's always going to be the same. This is like, it's very structured. And for someone like me that loves order and structured, human design just really feeds into that. So it's it's really significant for me. And uh, that's what I like about it. But it's really also based in psychology. So it's not going to be, there are transits and things like that, which I'm not going to get into today. But it, that can use a kind of guide of why you're feeling the way you're feeling today or how does that play out. But it's not really like a predictive system. Like you can use astrology literally for predictions, but human design is more about yourself, the people that you interact with and learning to understand yourself. It's really the whole, like, you know, if you want to really get into who you are and your shadows and things like that. So how do you get your chart? You can get it. These are just two websites. Now there's like, you know, when human design first came out, there was no apps. And now I think there's like 15 different kinds of apps. I don't use an app. So um, for myself, but I like my prefer preference is genetic matrix. And that's only because it's one of the few programs that does the million design. And um, so that's why it's most important for me. Um, and there's also a lot of other sites that you can get free websites, but these are the two that are most, the Jovian archive is the human design school and the system itself that was founded by raw and then genetic matrix. Like I said, they just offer a lot of different charts and a lot of different options when it comes to it, but you do have to have a pro membership. What you need to get it is your birth date, place of birth, and then an accurate birth time. If you do not have your birth time, it's usually on your birth certificate, even though a lot of states didn't start adding it till later, but you can call the hospital. I actually had a friend that did end up doing this because she wanted her birth time. And most, if the hospital's still around, they will have record of it um, because I don't think they're allowed to destroy medical records of birth times. Uh, but you could also get a rectification astrologer is another way you can get a birth time or you can use a pendulum. But there are ways to go about it. Like if you really do, if you have no idea how to find your birth time and like you wanted to really know what your human design was, uh, you can like always reach out to me or email me or something that I can always judge off the day. Cause sometimes the charts don't change at all during the day. And sometimes they change dramatically during the day. So it just kind of depends. Um, and genetic matrix also now offers something called birth time charts where they'll segregate it out based on different times and they show you all the charts at once. So you can kind of pick and choose which one fits best, like best fits you. So how it began was, so a man named Alan Krakauer, who was later changed to Rob Uruhu is the founder of human design. I have to do some, there you go. Um, now he considered, he's considered himself as a messenger. He does not consider himself a prophet, but basically a very long story short is that he had a mystical experience over a uh, eight day period with something called the voice. He had been, had a headache, came home from his friends and was like, walks into his house. And all of a sudden he hears this voice say, are you ready to get to work? And 
he was with a dog at the time and the dog actually like went into this trance. He went into this trance for eight days and that's why Mammalian De Design is around because he actually asked about it. Now, what was interesting about this is that he, after the experience happened, which he said was very painful for him, he was like, I'm not sharing this with anybody. He actually like burned all his papers, everything. He was like, people are gonna think I'm freaking nuts. But he, after a couple of years, decided like it's important for him to share. And the reason why was because of something that's coming in 2027. Um, Jacqueline's gonna drop the link for this, but I did a video on the presentation for 2027. So I'm not gonna get around to talking about it because it's super in depth, but basically it's, you can call it a prophecy. He doesn't call it a prophecy because he said, I'm not a prophet. He calls it, he actually calls it like a cosmic fairy tale, but it's basically kind of saying that, hey, um, the world's gonna kind of burn down and be reborn. It's not the best prophecy in the world. It's kind of, it's actually kind of disturbing, but um, there is an enlightenment side to this as well. But, it, and there's a lot, even in astrology too, with, you know, Pluto going to Aquarius and all that stuff. This is kind of a common theme right now. Like all the stuff that's happening in the world is because of all these shifts that are happening energetically. So it's interesting. I kind of compare like how the incarnation cross works and why this comes about. So um, now I wanted to give a little bit of science behind um the human design aspect like why what why do you get your chart like well how does your chart come about like what is the significance around it and the biggest part of this is neutrinos so neutrinos are quantum physics or physics and there's these teeny tiny little particles they're smaller than atoms they're super 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 tiny and they're constantly floating in the universe like these do exist this is not a metaphysical thing it's actually a thing um and when this the human design system came out science said neutrinos do not contain mass and Ra was like oh but they do and they contain mass and not only do they contain mass but they affect us so they come through our bodies every day and they imprint on us now later they have discovered that neutrinos do actually carry mass so that did end up being correct but the reason why in your profile when you are in your um chart you're going to see in a minute here that 70 percent of your personality comes from the sun because the neutrinos are most of them are coming from the sun Approximately 2% comes from the Jupiter, and that's why Jupiter does play a big role into influences around the career and abundance and all that stuff. But then the rest, of course, the rest is by the Milky Way and the other planets. So basically, the moment that you're born, these neutrinos come into your body. They go into these things they call crystals, but they're not really crystals. That's what he calls them, but they're not actually crystals. Um, it's, it's, it gets a little bit more um, complicated in the frequency aspect of it, but it's basically like it's the modern, modern equivalent of chi or prana. So, you know, it's like that energy that goes through your body, but this is what they say is why your chart is made the way it is. It's because the moment you are born, these neutrinos hit your body and that's why. Actually, and I should say too, they actually get created three months prior to that too. So when you're in the womb as well, they um, create your body when your body's being developed as well. So there's two parts to it. I just, it's a little complicated, but I just think it's important to kind of know why um, it comes in. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because depending on which program you use, this is going to look completely different. So, but I do want to, there are some consistencies behind every chart. So I'm just going to touch on it a little bit, which the most important part is like this here. So when you go in and you get your chart, you're going to see usually a left or a right side. Usually it's red or black, but I know there's different programs that use different colors. So you're going to see a design sign and a personality sign. Now, all these little symbols are planets, which you can see here, um, and they all mean something. Now, if you follow astrology, the planets mean something too. There is a little bit of a difference between what the astrology interprets the planets are versus human design, because it all still comes down to personality and psychology when it comes to human design. So there's a more um, like a principle behind it, I guess you can say, but I'm not going to go through every single one of them. You can see them here, but the, the most important part is like the fact that anything on the personality side has to do with your mind. So you're consciously aware of these energies that play a role. And it's basically, this is what you receive at the time of birth. And it's actually as well as what your past lives is through, right? Because we carry our souls over. It's our mind. It's what our memory is and what holds it. So you're going to be more consciously aware of this energy and probably recognize it if you were to go into your chart and say, oh yeah, that makes sense. I, yeah, I, I recognize that. Now, when it comes to your unconscious side, this is your body side. So when it comes in here, this is your vehicle. So he, it basically theorized that this comes in three months prior to you being born and it's supposed to contain your epigenetics, like your DNA kind of and then um, the things that you inherited from your grandparents. But what's unique about this is, is this is unconscious. So you may not be as aware of it. 
However, people will recognize it's about you. They might say, oh yeah, I totally get that. I see that in you, but you may not recognize it. Now, one thing too, is if you have health issues, this side, the body side will be the one that will kind of guide you towards what, uh, what health problems are coming in and one ways that like different modalities you can use to maybe help you with it. But that's where you do need your birth time because if the lines here, these little points is what makes it significant for your timing. Um, also you'll, if I think most charts include the arrows, but I don't know if all of them do, but these arrows here, they could be either left or right. This is my chart. So you can see I'm a quad left, which is meaning that I'm super structured. Oops. Whoa. What just happened? Um, I need structure and order. And I like to focus in on things and the way my brain works is very um, unique in a way, I guess you can say, but I can really retain memories as long as I know what I am and I'm focusing in on. This is all part of your outer cognition. So the chart itself, like these numbers and this here, this is your inner, your body, your, your inner core. The arrows have to do with the outside influences, like the outer, like how, like uh, what influences your mind, how you take in food, what environment you're supposed to be in. Uh, a lot of people, when they teach human design, they don't really, the arrows are the last things they touch on because they, it's not as important, but I, Usually when I give readings, I give the whole spiel, but sometimes I focus in on the arrow. Sometimes I don't. It depends on what type you have too, because it does play a role. Like if you're a projector, the arrows can help you understand if you're like in alignment or not, because it's a little bit more difficult for a projector. So that's the simplest terms of this. Now I will say too, the top four here, this is the sun and the earth. So these top four gates are 70% of your personality. These are the most important ones. And when they come together, they um, form your incarnation cross which you'll see somewhere on your chart. It will say like either ARX or LAX, or it might say um, if you are 4-1, which is super rare, it will say like uh, the juxt juxtaposition. So it's these four gates is what uh, creates your incarnation cross. In the simplest terms, incarnation crosses are pretty complicated. You could dedicate a whole like reading just to incarnation crosses, but it's basically your energy of purpose. So it's not necessarily your purpose in life, even though sometimes it can be that way, but like, it's just kind of like how your energy works and how it plays out and like how you influence other people. So for example, I have the incarnation cross of the unexpected. So a lot of times in my life, my <laughs> things happen unexpectedly when I least expect it. And I'm usually thrown into kind of like a leadership position or I have to step up in some way. And it's never, never predictable for me. So um, and for somebody that likes order and structure, that's very challenging for me, but that's just kind of the, the concept of this. And the only other thing I'm going to mention on this, I, I don't go into profiles today, but it is like the, your profile is pretty significant. It's, it has to do with like, if you were to get um, a role in a play, right? Like this is going to be the strict script you get. It's your archetype. So um, it's what's most consistent with like a zodiac sign and like it'd be like what your rising and sun and moon sign is together it kind of plays out this way and then the channels which you'll get as well in your chart which is whatever channels are significant because they create your centers they define your centers where you see color and I'm going to go into this in a second but these are constant themes in your life they're just things that play out consistently so again it's just I don't want to spend too much time on this because I could spend just like hours on just the chart itself but I just wanted to give you an idea of when you see it, what does it all mean, right? So now I'm going to go a little bit backwards here because usually people start with types and then they work their way in, but I'm actually going to start with centers and work my way towards types. And it's because the centers are what actually creates your type. Like if it wasn't for the centers, you wouldn't be a specific type. And it has to do with conditioning and your definition and everything. So that's why I'm going to start with the centers. Now, when it comes to human design, the first thing that they're going to say is the reason why you want to learn it is because you want to decondition yourself. That's a term that comes in with human design. Now, conditioning means, so if you look at this, this is an um, example of a true self. So if you have this chart, let's say, right? Now, this is a true self. This is someone that would be in alignment with their energy. And I'll explain what the colors and white means in a short time here. But wherever you do see white is what's going to be conditioned consistently, meaning who you're around, the transits, the planets, when they're rotating around, like those white centers can easily be affected. Colored wise, it's going to be things that are more fixed for you. And those are going to be influenced as in your childhood up to usually age seven. 
which I debate sometimes can be kind of age up to 14, I think, depending on which center it is, but they say age seven. So I just want to make that clear. Now, somebody can be what's called the not self. So you're always being conditioned and it can take up to, as they say, seven years to decondition each one, which what I mean by that is when you're being conditioned, it means that you're living out the shadow side of either the gate or the center. It means like the, there's a light and a darkness to everything. If you don't believe in duality, this might be a problem for you, but that's kind of how the energy works in your chart. There's a, there's an A, B, an A side and a B side to it. Right. So when you are somebody that's being conditioned by each, like one gate or one center, that doesn't mean you're not in the not self. It's somebody that's the complete opposite of what they're supposed to be. They're living out in a way where this, like they're acting as if their centers that aren't defined are defined and the centers that are defined are undefined. So it would be the exact opposite. Now, this is somebody like I did a presentation a while ago on true crime and human design. So what is the dark side of the chart? That is something that has to do with the whole not self when someone's playing out the exact opposite of how they're supposed to be. And I have experienced this in my life with people. And it's really interesting to see how it plays out. It's not necessarily fun to deal with people like that, but it can be very challenging, but it's interesting because you can do see that. So it's somebody that loses fully who they are. And depending on your type, it could be somebody that may never come back to be their true self, or it could be somebody that's meant to be the not self to be awakened. So there's different purposes around it. And when they say that it could take up, if they do actually, human design is pretty strict on the fact that they say it takes seven years to decondition it to get the shadow self out of that state. But I don't know. I mean, I think that it depends on the person. I don't know how strict they are on that, but human design will say there's no wiggle room on that. I don't agree with that. I think I've seen people be able to snap out of themselves pretty quickly. So it, it's just learning it, taking the awareness and letting your body kind of process it. Now, as I mentioned, so when it comes to these centers, okay, so white, I said is open. You're going to hear it either say open or undefined. The difference is, is like, like I said, this is my chart. So you can see here, I'm undefined in my identity and my ego, my will and my spleen, because I have gates in there. You can see these little red dots and those are the gates, right? But where it says open, like my head and my emotional center is completely open because I have no gates in there. That means I have no consistent energy whatsoever. So if you have centers with these open, these are going to be your most sensitive areas because there's no energy to hold on to there. It's going to be constantly influenced by whatever's around you. And it can be very triggering for you. So, and like, if you have a hundred percent open emotional center, you might've heard many times in your life, oh, you're super emotional. Well, guess what? You're not, you're just picking up on every single person's emotions because you are so sensitive in that area. Now, the one thing with the difference with the undefined is that when these, these centers get triggered, whether it be by somebody else, right? So like, um, I'm trying to think right now, I think like Jacqueline, you're an emotional manifesto, right? So when you guys are in the room, everybody's emotional center is defined right now because you, Jacqueline's an emotional manifester. So right now we're all kind of defined. So it's going to be triggering up all these different centers. And so wherever your whites, all of a sudden going to be colored in because that person's going to influence it. Yes, Jacqueline. One question, can you say what in the picture is a gate again? Oh, a gate is these little, is the numbers. And can so, you also mention what the yellow, green, and brown colors are? I cannot because Ra never explained it. <laughs> they don't know what the colors okay. are. I think that he okay. got it. Like, it's actually kind of a joke. So Ra is no longer alive, by the way. He died in 2011 by a stroke, but he never explained the colors. And they're like, maybe it's just you know, the chakras have colors because the centers are basically chakras in the simplest of terms. Like we, you know, most chakras, you think of the seven centers, um, which there is definitely way more than that. But supposedly when Uranus was discovered in 1781, we went from like a, a seven chakra system into a nine chakra system and he changed them and just called them centers. So think of them as chakras. So I don't know if that's the color association with it, but it doesn't line up necessarily with those colors. So I'm not really quite sure or why he even chose different shapes either. They never really kind of like did that. So now uh, you'll see here the, so what I say that the gates too. So how do the centers get defined? They get defined because one gate is connected to another and it creates something called a channel. So you see, I have 1156 and 360 here. So that's why these centers are colored in. Now where you see these gates that don't, they don't have their other friend. They don't have their other homie, right? So it's going to create something called a hanging gate. Now, depending on how you're defined, uh, which means like if you are a single 
or a split, which is something that you'll see in your chart. Like you'll see, I'm a large split because you see how these centers are connected, but there's no channel or path that connects all of them together. So there's no single definition here. I'm a large split. That means my hanging, where my I'm most sensitive to being conditions are my gates. The gates are what influence me the most. Now, if you are singly defined or a triple split, you your the centers will affect you more than the gates. So, um, and it's really, if you are, I'm not gonna go too much into definition. I'm gonna mention the, the circuitry at the end here. Hopefully we have time, but like uh, one thing to keep in mind too, is that when you're, if you're anything other than a single defined person, which is about, I think 40% of the population, when you meet another person, that's where you're going to want to learn about connection charts and how people influence you. Because you can meet somebody, like, especially if you're just a split, if they have your other half, it's going to feel like that person is like everything to you. They're going to make you feel whole. So it's gonna, it could be very influential on in how you become conditioned by somebody. And we actually tend to, I was listening to a book um, not too long ago and they were talking about how like attracts like. It's actually not true. According to human design and genetics, we actually are, we attract the opposite of us. So I love doing kind of connection charts a lot because you can always see how you attract other people because most likely whatever you are not colored into the person that you're with usually has what you don't have because you're trying to connect those pieces together. It's kind of a puzzle piece, right? Now, when you do bring in the energy from somebody else, you're going to reflect it back times two. So this is why it's so important to understand how energy works, because like I said, where you're colored, this is fixed and consistent. So this is the energy you give to other people, right? So wherever you see the colored, that's what you have. That's the gift that you give to people. Where you're open or undefined is the energy you take in from other people. Now, if you are in the shadow state, in these condition, in these colored areas, that means you're giving out shadow state energy. You're giving out a lower frequency, however you want to word it. So it's so important to be kind of aware of it because it's almost like you have a little bit of a responsibility to kind of clean out those centers to make sure that you're influencing in a more positive way. Now, um, yep, Jacqueline, go ahead. Is there a difference between the red connections and the black? Yes. So like I was saying before, uh, the charts. So where you see the red and the black, that's how you can tell. So if you see red, that means like, you see this one has red and black. That means I have 31 more than once in my chart. Oh, I can mention too, since, okay, so there's 64 gates total, right? So, but nobody's going to have all 64 ever. You will always have at one point, this energy, you'll feel all the energy of the chart at some point, just because you don't have it like consistently doesn't mean that you're not going to feel it at one point in your life. The most a person can have is 26 gates. Yeah, 26 gates. But most people have the gates repeated. So you can see in my chart, like I have 18 three times in my chart. So gate 18 is a pretty influential gate in my chart. And it's going to, the more you have the gate, the more impact it's going to be. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, like I said, if you see more than, so if it's 31 here, I have it on my here and I have it here, my North node and my sun. So I feel it consciously and I feel it subconsciously. How it plays out in that planet and depending on the line is going to be different. Like I said, human design is very complicated. But um, if it's just black, that means I only have it on my conscious side. If it's just red, that means I have it as a subconscious side. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, um, each of these centers, they're, they play out a different role. So as you can see here, there's motor centers. So when I go into the types, there's energy types and there's non-energy types, they call them. Mm -hmm. And the reason what makes you an energy type is depending on the motor that you have. So the motors are what gives you energy. It's the, it, each of them plays something different, right? So your root is adrenal energy and pressure. It's, it gives you energy to do. It's the pressure to do. It's the one, if you don't have your root defined or if you do have it defined, depending on how it wants to play out, it's going to be like, oh my God, I have to get this done today. If I don't get this done today, the world's going to crash. And it's just that pressure to do, I have to get this done today. Or you feel like empty if like I don't get it done or you're, the world's going to come crashing down. It's not, it's just the pressure from the root. Now, um, if it, you have the will, it's called the will to work, to rest. So the will center, which is this little triangle here, this is somebody that has a really strong motivation. It's the concept of motivation. So if you don't have your will center defined, you may not be as motivated as somebody else. Or if you have, if you go in these spurts where you're like, I don't feel like doing this today. Why do I have no motivation? Guess what? You're not meant to. That's your energy's going to burn out really quick if you try to use it. 
the it's called will to work to rest because it gives you all this energy to work and get motivated and really go, go, go. But you have to remember you have to take breaks. You're meant to rest as well. And this also drives your self-worth and your and your uh, abundance as well. The, the will center plays a big role into self-esteem and how like, uh, you know, if we're going into psychological terms, like narcissism and uh, sociopaths can and have this will center can play a big role in that as well. The sacral energy, which is the biggest baby in the in the chart for energy, it's life force energy. It's what creates life. And 70% of the population has their sacral defined. It's the number one, it's the biggest um, center that will be defined because that's what's going to define you as a generator. But it is not the number one authority because each of these centers play a role, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, of authority. So depending on which gate, which center you have will be your, uh, well, I don't want to jump ahead. So it'll just be your authority. So just keep that in mind. But um so, but this is the sacral energy is exactly what sacral is, if you know anything about chakras, but it's not only is it responsible for sex and reproduction, but creativity, and it gives you the energy to do, and it's the energy to build, it's the energy to create. So if it wasn't for the reason why there's 70% of the population is because they're the worker bees, they're the ones that can work, 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 and they don't need breaks depending on your chart, of course, but most of them don't need breaks, it, it, but only if you're doing what you love to do. The ESP or the emotional solar plexus is um, the motor for emotions. It drives your your emotions. It drives the your feelings and it's all mechanical. It's like, it kind of gives you a, a peace of mind knowing like feelings aren't really something you can control. It's just that they play out the way they want to play out, which I will explain later on. Now, your Ajna spleen and emotional solar plexus, which your spleen is here. The spleen and the Ajna and the emotional center, they're called awareness centers. So these are the centers that are going to cause anxiety. So if you have your, your spleen will cause um, fears. It's, it's a center for fear and intuition. So each of the gates in the spleen, which I'm not going to get into today, hold a fear and, a, and uh, an intuitive gift per se. So one thing to keep in mind is that, but it is, um, it's primal fears. So the spleen is your immune system. It's your health. It's actually the authority for all animals. It's that instinct. It's a flight and fight response, right? So when your spleen is going to cause that anxiety of fear, what drives your fear, but all one thing to keep in mind is that since they're primal, it has to do with that limbic system or the um, reptilian brain part where we are hunter and gatherers. So all these fears don't serve us anymore, but they did at some point. So if you start diving more into the gates and stuff and understand that, then you'll know that like, hey, this fear, I just need to let this go because it no longer serves me. But I mean, I can give like one example would be, you know, with um, 57, that's a, that's a super intuitive gate. It's, a, it's somebody that's like, um, it's, I call it the psychic, the psychic gate because it drives a lot of intuition. But the fear behind it is the fear of tomorrow. We don't really have to have that much fear of not knowing the future because our future is pretty much consistent now back in the day you know you didn't know what was coming you didn't know if a mammoth was going to trample you down or what you know so you didn't you had to worry about the future you had to worry about tomorrow you had to worry about migrating we we don't do that much anymore so that's what i mean by the fear um the ajna has to do with mental processing so if you think about it this way the head and the ajna they work but, um, in conjunct with each other. If you have your head defined, you automatically have your Ajna defined, but you can have your Ajna without your head defined, as you see mine is, right? But your head is like responsible for the questions that you think about or the inspirations that you get. It's really responsible for the questions of what, why, and how. And each of the gates in the head answer that. It has to do with the past, present, and future. So all those ideas come in, they filter down into your Ajna, and then you process it. It's your analysis, it's your belief systems. So one thing uh, is it will cause mental anxiety. So each of the gates have kind of a, a, a fear around it, but it's more of a, a mental fear. It's not so much of a primal fear, if that makes sense. Um, and the emotional center will be a nervousness. So it's it creates a nervous energy. And each of the gates... So it's more about the feeling, awareness of how are we feeling. Um, the pressure centers, which is the head and the root, like I said, that root is a pressure to do, but the head is the pressure to think. It's like, if I don't know this answer, then I'm going to, I, you'll go into mental anxiety. 
um, like one, like you can see, I have 24. That's gate is called the rationalization gate. And so I am constantly needing to know the answer of why. And if I don't, you guys, I go freaking insane. Like uh, literally the shadow state of 24 is psychosis because you're always searching for the answer. You need to understand why. What is the rational reasoning behind this? So um, that's kind of just an example. I will say if you have your head in Ajna defined, I'm sorry, undefined, because most the population, only 30% of the population has their head defined. So if you have your head defined, that means that you're responsible for inspiration on this world. Like you're responsible for inspiring other people, your belief systems and what you think will influence people that do like me that have nothing there. So if you don't have it defined though, if you have both of them undefined, you may have either a photographic memory or you may often think there's something wrong with your brain in a way where like, I don't know why I can't remember this, or you might question or feel insecure about what you know, because you'll be constantly you'll think that you don't remember, but how it works is like, you do remember it. it's all there. So I always explain it this way. If you have a defined Ajna, you have a nice, neat, organized desk. You have put all your files in a filing cabinet. Every memory is nicely organized and you just know when to pull it out when somebody asks you a question. However, the, if it's undefined, you have more of like a messy desk, like all the paperwork is there. But when someone asks the question, they have to ask the exact right question. And when they do, you're like, there it is. Yeah, of course. I know. But if they don't ask you in the right way, you may be like, I don't know where that freaking piece of paper is. I know I know this, but I just don't know where I put it. Sorry. So that's kind of how that works. So I always tell people when I see that they have both of them, that's something they relate with. Like, just know that you know more than you know. You know that you, you just don't know that you know it. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, what the two here, the the throat and the identity center. The throat is the most important center in human design. They talk about like all roads go to Rome. It's all, all channels lead to the throat because the throat is the manifestation center and it's our metabolism. So it really creates a lot of, it, it feeds the energy. Now, 30% of the population does not have their throat defined. And it can be very challenging for people that don't have a throat defined because they may feel like they don't, they can't find their voice. It works out in two ways. In the shadow state of it, it's gonna be somebody that over talks uh, because they're constantly searching for attention or they're gonna, they're gonna be super quiet and feel uneasy to talk. So, it, but there is a gift of course behind having an undefined throat because that means you have the ability to speak people's voice. Like you, you like a lot of therapists have it, singers have it. Taylor Swift has an undefined throat. Look at how much her songs are influential, right? Because people feel like, oh, you're just, you're speaking my song, like you're speaking my voice, right? So it's a really, it's a gift to have it. And you can also, you're lucky because you can learn you're most likely able to learn a lot of languages um, when you have an undefined throat. Now you can, if you have a defined throat as well, but I'm just saying that's, I wanna give you the gift for it because I know it can be difficult having an undefined throat. My little sister has a completely open throat. So she's so quiet and I'm always like, speak child. So that's, um, but it could be, it could be kind of um, destabilizing because you may not know your own voice. You may feel like, I don't know what my voice is or how to speak. You do know how to speak. You just, it's just, just energy. Um, one thing I will say too, which you can't see here, but if you have a gate 12, um, in the throat, that's the most powerful gate in the throat itself. And so if you are somebody that has a gate, but you stuttered a lot as a child, it's because of that gate, because that gate is so powerful that it can sometimes cause stuttering in childhood because you don't know how to use your power. It's almost like you're, the power is trying to get out. And it doesn't know how to release itself because it's almost, it's overwhelming. It can be kind of scary. It's called the, the verbal gunslinger though, because it means that your voice is like, you have the power to make someone feel this big, or you have the ability to make someone feel amazing. So you have a very powerful, influential voice. So just keep that in mind because you can cut people down very, very easily. The identity center is where something called the magnetic monopole sits. So when... Uh, I, I don't know if I want to go too deep into the physics of this, but the identity center is, is your direction, your sense of purpose and love. So if you don't have your identity defined, you may struggle and think, do I know love? What is love? Now, this is something that I was really um, uh, familiar with because even as a child, like I literally wrote a book when I was 10 called What is Love? Because I just, I'm like uh, constantly trying to understand it. I want to read it. I read a lot of books on it. Like, how does this work? I don't know if I truly feel it. 
So it's something that, um, and it can make you feel kind of like you're not worthy of love, or maybe you might not love yourself as much as you should. Um, but, and then, or if you're like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. Well, if you're undefined in your identity center, you're not meant to know what you want to do with your life, which is so frustrating. <laughs> Again, for someone that needs order and structure, I'm like, really, I got the most difficult chart when it comes to not the ambiguity behind of what's supposed to be. You're not meant to know really your direction. It kind of shows up when it, when it, you're ready for it. Now, if you have your identity defined, it means too, that how you love or how you give love, like. I'm going to throw out the attachment theory, which I'm not the, I'm like, I'm 50, 50 on the attachment theory, but like how you um, give love will be defined by how you received love in childhood. So that's one way to kind of know like how the conditioned states work. So that's kind of a brief overview of the center that can go really deep into them, but that's, I'm going to try to keep this, but does anybody have any questions before I move on from this part here? I'm going to ask really quick. So I see there's some chats. We good? Okay, wonderful. Now, when I said authority, okay. So like I said, I'm doing this kind of backwards, but depending on your type, which you're gonna see here. So you'll see it when I go into the types, but emotional, this is listed in the hierarchy of, uh, I'm just gonna move this, there we go. Uh, most common type of authority. Now your authority is, how would I describe this? So if you look at your type as a house, right? Like you're, if you're, you live in a house, your authority is the rules or the laws that keep that house maintained. It's going to tell you what it needs. It's going to tell you how to decide things. It's going to give you like, you know, when you're, when you're in danger, or there's something off when you're out of alignment or your energy is off. It's because your authority, you're not listening to your authority. It's supposedly, if you listen to your authority, life's going to be perfect, but who really listens to our authority all the time? But it's your body, it's your inner body's guide to knowing what to do or when, what to say or what, or how you make decisions. It's going to say this is yes or no, basically in the simplest of terms. Now, emotional, which I will go through in a second here, but this is the number one most common authority. Now, if you have an emotional center, it means that you, when you make decisions, you are supposed to wait for emotional clarity. If you have an emotional center defined, that means you're either a manifester generator, a manifesting generator or a projector. Get a mood chart. That is my always my number one thing. If you have, if you are emotionally defined, get a mood tracker because you will, it's important for you to learn how your emotions work. Because as I, I will go through each of them here in a minute, but there's a certain wave depending on what channels you have and your wave can become predictable. And so if you can learn how your, um, your emotions are working since they're considered mechanical in human design, you'll know when emotional clarity comes through because you're never going to truly know unless you really get to know, like it's like a deep set, deep dive into your emotions and how you feel. Oh, go ahead. Jacqueline, did you say something? No. Um, okay. And so, but one thing is that when I say about waiting, like it's hard for generators, manifesting generators and manifestors to have to wait for anything. So I empathize with you. I do not have my emotional center defined. So I am not an emotional generator. I'm something called a peer generator. But one thing is that like, if you have to make a decision and you just, you don't know if you're, am I emotionally clear? I don't know. Always wait at least 24 hours. You are not meant to make decisions in the moment. You've got to wait. Like if you go on dates, you're supposed to go on three dates before you decide if you really like somebody, they say, that's just something to keep in mind. Now, if you are a peer generator or a peer manifesting generator, it means you're sacral. Now you can be at this, like I said, your sacral might be defined and this one might be defined together. You're still an emotional. You're, that means emotionally wise, like that's the top, that's the most influential center. Then it's going to be sacral. If you have your sacral defined and your emotional center defined, so if you're like an emotional manifest manifesting generator or uh, emotional generator, the reason what happens is if you don't wait for emotional clarity, your sacral energy can be clouded. It can it can be misguided. Now, if you're just a pure generator like myself, it means that you're meant to make moment decisions in the now. It's that gut feeling that you get. If you are a generator, the best thing people can ask you is a yes or no question. If they ask you like, um, hey, so what are you in the mood for dinner tonight? You're like, I don't know. But if they ask you like, hey, do you want Mexican food? And you're like, no. Or, you know, that's, it's because the sacral speaks through you in yes or no answers and it actually grunts. So the sacral energy is a voice. It's when you say, uh-huh, or, uh -huh, or somebody wants to like ask you a question without you paying attention. And you're just like, yeah, uh-huh. 
And they're like, wait, you're like, wait, what did I say? Yes. I'm sorry. What? You know, that's your sacral speaking through you. It's saying it's going to make the decision for you. And it feels different for everybody. Sacral energy for me, it was something I really had to tap deep into. If you've ever had any trauma, um, you know, sexual abuse in, in childhood or anything that's like related to reproduction or anything like that, like your sacral can be uh, conditioned. So it's something you want to keep in mind. You might, your sacral might be overprotective or overworked because it's trying to protect you from something. So you might have to rework the energy. Like I was, my sacral was really good at telling me when things were bad for me, but not very good when it was good. So it was something I really had to learn. So it feels different for different people, but, um, and you have to learn, but it's usually that means that your body's also a pendulum. So that's the best way to kind of describe it. Like your body might move towards something or away from something like it was good. You might do that or it can contract or expand is the simplest way to kind of explain it. Now, if you don't have your emotional center defined or your sacral defined, then that means you're a splenic projector or a splenic manifester. It means that your spleen is your authority. And this is also that very much you must make decisions in the moment. You cannot wait to make decisions. Like I said, sacral beings are not either. It's always about the now. The difference between the spleen and the sacral is that the spleen is more about like, it's not as potent as your sacral energy. Meaning like if you're a sacral being, if you're not in alignment with your sacral energy, it's going to just bug you. It's going to poke at you and be like, Hey, I said, no, we're not doing this. Right. Like, no, no, no. And you, it will start to manifest in like in, as health issues. If you do not listen to your, your spleen's like, Hey, this isn't good for us. Oh, you didn't hear me too bad. My, not my fault. Sorry. Like it will tell you once. And like, if you don't listen to it or, or, or are aware of it, you may end up making the wrong decision if you do not make it in the now. So you're meant to kind of be spontaneous and how it feels like I've heard a lot of people talk about like how the spleen feels, but some people talk about it as like it being like actually painful. Like it might be like a pinched nerve feeling, or it might be like a spark. Um, one way to really test your energy, if you're a sacral or spleen, splenic project, um, spleen authority is with food. So if you go to the refrigerator and say, I'm not going to think about what I want and just see how your body responds to certain foods is a way to test kind of how your energy works. Go ahead, Jacqueline. What if you have all three defined, emotional, sacral, and splenic? That means your emotional, your emotions are your authority. Emo this is the hierarchy. So what you have defined here, this is the top one. So that's going to override all the other ones. And would certain health and medical issues in your body correlate with the body's authority? Yes. Like I said, if you're not listening to it, yes, it can. If you're a generator, especially, which I'll talk about when I get to the types, if you don't, if you're not in alignment with your energy, it definitely can cause autoimmune disease. If you are defined in your spleen, even if your spleen is not a th your authority, but even if your spleen is just defined, you are not meant to have autoimmune diseases. Like it's actually your, your immune system. So people that have their spleen defined tend to have um, really strong immune systems. They don't get sick very often, but when they do get sick, they get really sick. Actually, I'd say this too, if you have your spleen defined, like you should always go to the doctor at least once a year to get a checkup because it means it masks the symptoms of when you're getting sick. So you may not know, like you could have cancer and you may not know until like stage three because your body will mask the symptoms because your spleen is trying to protect it. It's not aware of it. Um, but it does mean too that you're most likely able to recover. And it's, it's interesting when you go into groups and you hear about how the, the centers work, because most people that have their spleen defined, some people will say like they need higher doses of medication because your body's resistant to medication. If it's undefined, it means that, you know, you're, you can pick up on other people's illnesses in a way. Um, so, but the point is, it's like I said, if you have your spleen defined, you have autoimmune disease. It means that it's manifesting through energy. Like that means you're, there's somewhere in your chart that's causing the autoimmune disease to come in. But always go to a doctor first, please. Please don't just go off of your sake, your spleen, please. Always check with the doctor. Okay, medical advisory there. Now, if you don't have your emotional sacral or splenic defined, that means that you are an ego manifester or an ego projector. This means that your voice is your authority. Now, because it comes from the heart, you're meant to speak from the heart and it's your determination, your ego. Now, people that have their ego defined and that's their, that is their authority can come off a little egotistical. But you know what? Guess what? You're supposed to be egotistical because that's your authority. So it's, but the uniqueness of this is listening to your voice. Your voice is what will tell you what is right. It's not necessarily like, how do I say this? And it has, you have to speak out loud. So it's how you tell the story. And it can, you speak to yourself, but um, it is, it is similar when it comes to the self. 
So like these two kind of work in conjunction in a way, because it means like, uh, uh your ego, how do I say this? Your, so if you don't have your ego defined, but your identity defined, like these are rare, by the way, once we go like this, this is like 55% of the population. I think this is like 45% of the population. Spleen is 10% of the population. Anything below is 2% and below. So a lot of people aren't going to relate to these. But if you have your ego or yourself defined or identity defined as your authority, it's always about your voice. It's speaking out. It's um, And you can speak to yourself in the mirror, right? It's meant that you're just supposed to hear your voice and what it says because your voice will always tell you the truth. If you are a mental projector, right? So that means that you are also your voice is also your authority, but your environment is. The difference between the ego and the self versus mental is that uh, mentals need to have more than one person to speak to. They can't just speak to their self. They have to have like a trusted advisory board and they have to tell each person that story. And each time they tell that story, it's like the consistency in the story is what will help you guide that decision. Now, if your ego, self or mental, I want to make it clear too that you speak out, not because you're not speaking to people because you're looking for advice. You speak because you just need them to be a sounding board. It's like literally like, hey, I'm going to tell you the story. I don't want to hear what you have to say about it. I just need to hear my own voice. Sorry. So don't let them influence you back because I'll tell you right now, if you're ego self or mental, it means that you're super open. So people are going to be very influential on you and your authority can be very easily influenced as well. Now, if you are have nothing defined and your chart looks like this, but you have little red dots all over it, or you see little circles in there, it means that you are a reflector and you are a very unique individual which I will talk about more when I go into the types, but it means that the moon is your authority and you have to wait 28 days to make a decision. Um, so you have to go off the, you you feel different every single day based off of how the moon is playing out. I'll go more into that as I get into the types. Any questions on authorities as I continue on here? No, okay, good, great, wonderful. Now, like I said, I'm going to focus a little bit on the emotional center just because 55% of the population is defined in this. So I do think it's important. And even if you are not defined in your emotional center, you should still pay attention to this because there is going to be times where, depending on the transits, or if you're if you're um, not defined in your emotional center, but you date somebody or you're with somebody that's emotional, or if you're a parent and you have emotionally defined children and you're not defined, guess what? You're going to feel those um, waves come through and you're going to feel at times too. There can tend to be um, conflicts with people when they're defined adversely, not emotionally defined, depending on how defined you are. But like, this is something that I've really had to come into because I've learned that like, and you have to remember too, like just because you're feeling it a certain way doesn't mean that people are feeling it the same way. So how you feel, what anger feels like may not feel like anger to somebody else. It might be frustration, right? So it's it, it's really, it, it's good to have an emotion. This is like emotional intelligence, basically. Now, depending on what channels you have or what gates you have defined in your emotional center, this will be what type of wave you have. So as I said, um, they talk about that your, your emotions are mechanical. It's like this chemical process in your body. They go through these waves. You can't do much about it, but depending on how you're defined, will tell you how you experience these emotions, right? So if you have 3740 or 1949, or you have any of these four gates, it means that you might have a tribal, you have a tribal wave, right? So the tribal wave is probably the easiest to, I don't know if I want to say manage, but predict. So it's super predictable. This is like where if you get a mood tracker, you're going to be able to see the pattern of your emotions. And you're going to be really able to understand emotional clarity. Like, yeah, this is okay. This is where I'm dipping. Now, when I say emotional clarity, I don't, like I said, it's hard for me to like say this is how it feels like because I don't have my emotions defined. But from what I understand, it's kind of the moment where you're just like, yeah, sure. Like you're not super excited. You're not like, oh my God, yeah, let's do this. Or you're like, no, I don't want to do it because I feel like crap today. That's not emotional clarity. It's that middle, it's the, I can go either way. Because the thing is that if you're emotionally defined and you make a decision when you're super happy or you're super excited and you're like, yeah, I'll do it. You know what? Tomorrow they might ask you like, hey, remember when you said you'd do that? And you're like, crap, I don't want to do that anymore. That's why. So people that have emotionally centered, like defined can be kind of flaky at times because, or they'll, they'll bail on things a lot. Cause they're just like, I know I said yes, but I don't want to do this anymore. Sorry. So, or if you say no and you're in like some dip, like in, in a, you're saying it because you're not feeling, um, you're feeling a more lower frequency. It's because you might miss out on an opportunity that's meant to be. 
So that's why it's important to always wait. So again, if you have a travel wave, it's kind of like this ticking time bomb. It's like, I like to call it. So it goes tick, tick, tick. Like it's push, you're going to push it under the rug. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to worry about this today. I'm not going to worry about this today. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, something triggers it and it just explodes. It's like, you, it, it, I say like, it's like you trip over the rug because you pushed it up too high. So right after that, right? After you explode or you get super excited or yeah, well, everything kind of goes, that's your emotional reset. And that's when you're supposed to make decisions. But like I said, you can track it. Now, if you have 22 or 39.55, it's called an individual wave. And people will probably accuse you of being a really moody person because it means that you are definitely moody and you're meant to be. It's super unpredictable. You can stick in these waves, like you can be in the high wave for like, 10 minutes, or you can be in the highway for 10 days. Eh, you don't really know. One thing is that when you're in the lower end of it, you get out of it quickly. You're consistently going up and down. So when you have an individual wave, it's not so much how you're feeling, but the mood. So if somebody says to you, hey, let's let's go out, and you're like, eh, I'm not really in the mood, then don't go out. Like, listen to your body. Because if you go out, it probably won't, you probably won't have that great of a time. You'll probably regret going out. So, um, and... And the one thing with the 3955, if you have 3955, watch your moods on how you eat because it will drive emotional eating. So if you're somebody that's like, oh, you know, you grab that bag of chips when you're super bummed out, it's probably coming through. Yep, go ahead, Jacqueline. I can't, you're muted. That. Sorry about that. Okay. Do these need to be fully connected or if we have the hanging gate, is this still the case? Yes. So the channels, like if they're not connected, um, they can influence you, but the channels are the most influential. So yes, you can still be affected by these gates if they're just hanging, if they're not the full channel, but it still, it still plays out in that individual energy. But if you do have a channel and not a gate, because you will have a channel, you'll have some kind of channel because you're defined. So um, the channel will be more influential than the gate, if that makes sense. So that's right. You can have you might have all three waves, congratulations. But like, that means you're going to have to really, those mood trackers will really come in handy because you'll know how each one plays out. Now, the collective wave is called the chicken little wave because it's the, when you crash, the sky is falling down. This is all built up in expectations. So if you have 35, 36 or 41, 30, it's when you, you crash because something does not go the way you expected it to go. It's a lot of, it deals with a lot of crisis and it makes you feel like you could, you can stand, you tend to stay in the low a lot longer than the other waves, but it's literally like the world has just crashed down because it did not go the way I wanted to. So one really good key point to remember is that if you have either these two channels or those gates, minimize your expectations. You're meant to like kind of engage without expectations in life, which <laughs> probably is not very easy. I, I give you props for it. Um, if you're managed to do that, but just think about when you feel really low, is it because something was disappointing to you? So that's how you can kind of manage it. And when you do have that crash and you get back up, that's how you're gonna have that emotional clarity. Now the source wave is only, if you just have the source wave, if you just have 659, your emotional center is not gonna be as influential as your authority, but because it plays out, it means like this is the source of all emotions. It's a very, don't get me wrong, it's a super potent ch channel, but it's it plays out a lot more when it comes to relationships or how you engage. It's all about the making and breaking of bonds. So like it's, you know, if you act a certain way when there's a breakup versus like, oh, I just lost my job, you might respond in a completely different way because of this channel here. It's a very primal energy. It's really driven by, it's, it has a lot of sexual aggression to it too. And like this primal energy. So also like sex life can influence this as well. Um, or if you're pregnant and you have this channel, yeah, it can be very, very influential because your baby's going to definitely play a role in that. Um, or if you have even one of the gates, especially six. So six, like gate six alone is responsible for all war and peace on this planet. So that's, it's, <laughs> To give a little bit of like how potent that energy is. Um, it's actually when I do research on, uh, not to go dark, but when I do research on criminal charts and stuff like that, 659 is the number one channel for um, murder. So because it's all about this primal sexual, 
sexual energy. It's meant for reproduction. Yeah. Jack, did you have a question, Jacqueline? Yeah. Are the waves the same as incarnation cross on the chart? No. No, 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 no. Okay. Completely. This has nothing to do with the incarnation, incarnation. Well, I mean, your gates can play into that, but um, the this is only to do with how you feel, your emotion, like, you know, if you're, you have, if you're, you go into doubt, bouts of depression, like it might be because of these waves. There's also gates that cause depression too, but besides the um, emotional center, but this only has to do with your emotions and how you feel about things. Trust me, like I being hundred percent open in my emotional center, whenever I see the source wave and the transits, I'm like, crap, like, don't talk to me for like a freaking week because I'm usually like super triggered or I'm like, I might break, if I'm dating, I might break up with you that week. Sorry. Like, I don't know. Just like, cause I get, you feel, you feel all the feelings. So it can be very, like, that's what I mean by like the potent energy, why it's important to know how these waves work, because if you're not defining your emotional center, you're going to pick up on it and you're going to feel it times two. That's why it causes conflict a lot with someone that's defined and not defined. Okay. Any questions? We're good. Okay. Now we get to go on the types. Yay. So this is, there's now, there's a little bit of debate. There's four types. Okay. But there's going to be, uh, some people say there's five because of the generator manifesting generator thing. Um, I say there's four because if you're a manifesting generator, you're still a generator. So there's manifestors, generators, projectors, and reflectors. Now what's important about the type, the reason why I wait to talk about these is because the types really, they actually didn't originally exist in human design. Like Ra created these types. It was not that the voice or the message was like, hey, there are these types. He created these types to help people understand how their auras and their energy works. Um, so, and to, when it says energy versus non-energy, manifestors and generators are the energetic types. Projectors and reflectors are non-energy, meaning like if you're a projector, which I'll talk about a little bit more, or a reflector, you're not really meant to work really long hours. Now you could still be an energetic type if you're a projector, if you have like your will or your root defined or your emotional center defined, you might have a little bit of extra energy. But if you're like a splenic projector or um, a self-projected projector, eager projector, you're you're really not meant to work like physical labor and long hours. Like you're meant to take breaks. So that way you can get out of work. I'd be like, sorry, dude, I'm a projector. I need a break. Um, but, and each of these, but what's unique about these is how your aura works and the strategy. So your strategy is how you are meant to interact and approach life. So if you think of like how I said, your authority is the rules, right? So the, um, your strategy is how you're meant to use those rules. Like how do those rules play out? Like, how do I fix up the house? If I need to fix up the house, this is how you're meant to engage in life. So, oh, yeah, go ahead. Are these four types, do they match up with the four elements like fire, air, water, and earth? Kind of. And I'll, I'll I mean, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen people like what I, it's hard because I think about like manifestors, I would say it's probably more of a fire type, but it's hard because generators can be considered fire too. Some people call uh, um, uh, manifesting generators the fire. So, Kind of yes or no. I'm gonna say yes or no in that one. Um, th there is they just call them the four. It's not it's not directly related to the elements. Now, I'm gonna kind of explain each type as a house. So if you're a manifester, which is approximately less than ten percent of the population, now this type is eventually not gonna last. Um, it's actually dying out because like one thing with 2027 is that there's a new human species coming about. So uh, manifestors are like. They're the oldest type. So in ancient times, these were the, the emperors, the kings and the queens. They were the ones that needed when we needed authorities and like really this uh, overwhelming um, power and domination. That's what manifestors were. So they're going to be coming less and less in the population. But right now, if you are a manifestor, it's less. And you are unique because your strategy means to inform. This is the only type that gets to initiate. They like, when you think of manifesting, like, this is what manifestors are meant to do. They are meant to manifest, but then whatever they think they want to do, they have to inform the other person. Now, if you are a manifestor, it means that you have some kind of motor to your throat. You do not have your sacral defined unless you're a manifesting generator, which I'll get into. So just keep that in mind. If you have your emotional center defined, your spleen defined, or this will center defined, and it has some channel that you have to have your throat defined as well. If you don't have your throat defined, then you're not a manifestor. Because that's where the energy comes from. Now, 
when it comes to a house, if you're sitting in a house and you're going into some kind of suburbia, a manifester is the house that has that like 10 foot iron gate blocking the house. And like, it's like the house where you're like, Ooh, do I want to go in there? Is it haunted? Like, we don't know, but I kind of want to, but I don't, cause I'm kind of scared. So it meant, it means that your aura is like locked down. It is closed and repelling because manifestors are so influential and they're, they're the only type that gets to initiate. So they're not meant to be influenced. If you are a manifester, you might have struggles with relating to other people. Um, it's something that it's, you might feel different or you don't have like, you know, like the warm and fuzzy feelings kind of like people don't get that from you. You can get manifestors can, I mean, I usually can pick up on a manifestor because they have just a very, they have a very strong presence. It's like, you just know, like there's something about these people that you maybe don't want to mess with, or like, they just have this sense of strength. Now, when I mean about strategy, right? So let's say that you are an emotional manifester. Now I say you can initiate, but you're only meant to initiate if you have emotional clarity. So let's say that means too, like if you're wanting to date, guess what? You're responsible for initiating the first move. You have to make the first move. Um, and, but you have to wait for you having emotional clarity. What I mean by informing is because manifestors are, they're the ones that are going to get most punished in childhood because their energy is so powerful towards parents that parents tend to either punish them. So in childhood, you're either going to become the rebel, the rebel or the people pleaser because you're going to shut down your energy because it's going to be too powerful. So you're just going to people please the shit out of others because you're like, I don't know. It's so powerful. I don't know what to do. Right. So, but if you are, or you're going to be like, I don't want to be controlled. Don't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do. Right. So then you're going to rebel and you might tend to be the, the bad boy, the bad girl and the, the black sheep of the family. Um, and so the reason why you're meant to inform though, is because your energy is so powerful that people are going to be like, Ooh, can I trust this person? I don't know. Like they seem strong. Right. So if you inform people, then you, then they, it opens you up to connect with others and it gets them to trust you more. So that's the simplest. I mean, I can go way more into manifestors, but I just want to, I got to keep these a little brief. I'm just going to check the time. It is one away. Okay. So that, is there any questions on manifestors? So generators, if you are a um, pure generator and a manifesting generator, I'm going to go into manifesting generators in a second here. But if you are a generator, you are the house on the block that has a really cute little white picket fence. It's open. There's no lock. The front door is open. You're baking cookies, man. Like everybody just is going to come in and have a freaking cookie because they just your energy is so inviting. Just come on open. And so when you are a generator, which I said is 70% of the population, you want to make sure that that means you're inviting energy to come in. You're open and you just suck it up like a little vacuum. So I always tell people, like, if you're a generator, one thing you want to keep in mind is that you're meant to kind of clean out your aura. So one thing you can do like at night, when you, before you go to bed, you can kind of imagine like a vacuum sitting at the end of your bed and it's just sucking up your aura of all the crap that you kind of collected in the day. Now, being a generator, like I said, these are the worker bees of the population. So in ancient times, these were the ones, these were the people that built the pyramids and everything that all these beautiful structures in the world and things that are built, the generators, generators are responsible for that. They are to do. So manifestors, they initiate and they create, they come up with the ideas and then they tell the generators what to do. And generators are like, okay, cool, I'll do that. Because we just say yes to everything. Um, now, when I say about strategy, oh, I should say two. I'm sorry. I want to go back one second. Um, you'll see here I say emotional theme. I didn't mention that with the manifester. One way to say if you're in alignment or not, it's how your emotional theme is. So if you're a manifester, when you feel at peace and things feel good and you just, yeah, life is kind of just good. That means you're in alignment. If, you have, if you're expressing anger or rage, then you're definitely out of alignment. If you are a generator, it's called satisfaction and frustration. So satisfaction means like, yeah, life is good. Like it's give myself a pat on the back. Everything's great. I'm satisfied. I don't need, I don't need more. I'm good. Frustration though can be challenging for a generator because frustration comes in two ways for a generator. There's called the plateau frustration. And then there's a frustration where you're out of alignment. So as a generator, how do I say this? So your sacral energy sometimes takes like a breather. So if you're, let's say you started a business and like, you know, like your sacral energy is like, yeah, I feel it. Like I just, it lit me up. I knew this is what I'm supposed to do. 
but nothing's happening. Like, why am I not getting any clients? Why am I not getting any customers? But you're like, yeah, but I still feel like this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It's called this plateau time. So that frustration that comes in is not the frustration because you're out of alignment. It's kind of the universe being like, you ready? Because I'm going to give it to you now. Are you ready? Are you truly ready? So it's like this break. It's like a plateau. It's like, we're going to give you a little bit of a breather test the, to kind of test you to see if this is really what you're supposed to be doing. This is really what you want. Okay. Then I'm going to slap it on you. So the difference is, it's like, but let's say you opened up a business and you're not getting customers and you just feel like crap. I, I did every, I, did, I wasn't meant to do this. I'm sick. I'm getting sick. It's causing digestive issues. I'm getting headaches. What am I going to do with my life? You're out of alignment. That's kind of the difference between the frustration. I hope that makes sense because when you're out of alignment as a generator, like I said, one big thing with a generator is that you need to move your body. You have a lot of energy. If you are not moving your body at least 15 minutes a day, like if you're somebody that sits at a desk all day long, you you know, like the standing desks are really good for generators. You're supposed to take a breather and step around. Like you have to move your body or it's going to start to shut down. It's kind of like you're going to drain your battery because it's just like, if you have a lot of apps running in the background, but you're not really engaging in them, your battery is still going to drain. So you're going to lose that kind of vitality for life. So like it's, you're really meant to, it's good for you to get up and walk around. Even if it's just even five minutes a day, just do something, move your body. Now I want to have to respond. So Oh, the best way to explain this is like, so the number one thing is great when people ask you yes or no questions, like you were meant to ask yes or no questions or something called like if you're a pure generator and not emotional, but just pure, like there's something called sacral sessions where people ask you like rapid response questions and you say yes or no to them without thinking. And uh, it, it really helps you learn how your energy works and how the sacral responds. But let's say um, it means that you're not meant to initiate. So what I say about responding, the universe is always in, in communication with you when it comes to a generator. Like I saw the sign by Ace of Base. I guarantee you they were all generators because that's what generators are. It's all about signs. You get signs and that's what you're supposed to respond to. So it could be a billboard. It could be watching a TV. It could be hearing a song. And there's something about you that kind of ooh sparks in you. And you're like, that's a response. It doesn't have to be a literal question. Now, if you're dating somebody, you're supposed to at some point have them ask you, you know, if, like two generators date, like at one point you're supposed to ask like, hey, do you like me or something like that? So you could answer the yes or no question and really truly know. But, you know, when you, you're not supposed to necessarily just sit and wait for somebody to come to you to respond. Like if you're on a dating app, like swiping left or no, right, left or right, that's still responding because you're seeing a stimulation and you're responding to it. Like how you can know though, what's really cool about being a generator it's like you, like I said, you're always talking with the universe. So let's say you come up with this idea and you're like, did I come up with that idea? Or did I, did, did I respond to it and not re realize it? You just ask the universe, like, is this something you want me to do? And you're going to get kind of a sign. Like a really good example of this is I was once giving a reading to somebody and I was saying like, oh, it'd be really cool to like do a million design for shelters. Like I would love to go into these like the humane society and do readings for all the dogs in there. And then maybe they can pair them with the right people. Cause they'll know what the type of dog is. And I was like, wait, did I come up with that idea? Am I supposed to do this? And then, so I said, all right, if you want, is this something I'm supposed to do? If you want to, then you're going to need to give me a sign. And like, no shit, like an hour later I'm online and I saw this like article popped up that said astrologer teams up with Squarespace to get dogs adopted. Like that's, and that's the sign. Like, and, and, that's a really obvious sign, but most of the time they're not going to be that obvious. You kind of have to pay attention. Um, but, you know, if you really are really demanding, I mean, there's been times where I've literally yelled at the universe. I'm like, you need to tell me what you want me to do on this one. So, you know, I, the universe is your boo. It is like your best friend. So start talking to it. Now, if you are, um, oh, where is my, one second here. I want to see something. Where's my manifesting generator? You were supposed to come up first. Hang on. Oh, my manifesting generator is not show. Okay, sorry you guys, but no different. It's just that you have a manifester in there. Okay, so the difference between a manifesting generator and a generator, if you are a manifesting generator, you're gonna have your sacral defined and you're gonna have some kind of channel going to the throat. Now, if you are a manifesting generator, you will have either 3420, which is this one charisma. Now, if you have 3420 and you are a manifesting generator, you are the ultimate manifesting generator. It's what a generator is all about. It's the energy, it's the theme of busyness. You have to go, 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 go. 
manifesting generators, the biggest difference between them, and they're kind of like a steroids, a generator on steroids. Like they, you have like, you're kind of superhuman and you're meant to respond and then inform. So you don't like, you have to wait for the initiation and then you're going to have to go forward with it and tell somebody about it. If, yep, go ahead, Jenna. Check one. You're muted, sorry. That's okay. Generator, what I don't understand is how or if I should manifest, especially since we are supposed to respond, not initiate. Yeah, this is the thing that I struggle with. So uh, not that you can't manifest, okay? Like, I mean, because I'm not going to tell somebody, no, you're not allowed to manifest because you're a generator. You can manifest, but look, you have to still look for a sign, okay? So that's the best way I can go. That's the best way I can explain it. Like, let's say, you know, I want to manifest this job, right? Like, but is this the right job for me? Well, if you're trying to manifest it, but it's not the right job for you, you're not going to, it's not going to feel right to you. There's, there, it's not going to come as easy to you. There's not going to be any signs. You're going to feel out of alignment. There's going to be a struggle or frustration with it. So that's kind of how manifesting works. And depending on your arrows to human design plays a role in manifestation, which I'm not going to get into because it's really... The reason why I have a more of a struggle with it, it's like if you're left more left arrow than right, it means like if you want to manifest, you have to know exactly what it is that you're manifesting. Like I have to say I want $2,423.64. Like I can't just say I want money coming in. Like it, like it has to be very strict. If you're more right arrow, then you can be more open in your manifestation. So there's some like rules, but whatever. I'm not like I manifest, I'm kind of on the fence about how I feel about manifestation, but it's no matter what, that's why it's always pay attention to the signs because you'll get a sign if this is what you're meant to manifest. So it's kind of like, I'll, I'm not, what do I want to tell this story? Uh, like a good way is kind of like, I accidentally, I, I tend to accidentally manifest at times where like I'll yell something out because I'm so frustrated and then it like appears, but it's kind of like the universe responding to me being frustrated. So like, then that's a sign that this isn't something that I meant to manifest. So I'm not going to go into the specific of it because it's, it's a sensitive story. Anyway, so um, uh, I hope that makes more sense. Now, a lot of people ask sometimes, like, am I more manifester than gener generator, depending on the sign? Uh, in human design rules, they'll say, no, you're still a generator no matter what. I don't necessarily agree with that. So if you are um, somebody that, a manifesting generator that has their sacral defined, and let's say you don't have 2034, but you have your sacral defined, and then you have 1222 or you have 3536. You're a little bit more of a manifesting manifester generator than a generator manifester because it doesn't play out the same because the problem is that people will say, oh, you're like manifesting generators, you need to be going, going, going. They're busy, busy, busy. And they're always doing, doing, doing and creating, creating, creating. But um, that won't relate to you if you have 1222 and not 2034. So that's why I say there, there's a little bit of a difference. One thing too, is that generators are meant to burn energy. So you are meant to work, 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 and then pass out at the end of the night. If you're a manifesting generator, you're meant to work, work, work. And then like, I don't know, read a book before you go to bed. Like you need a wind down time versus your generators can just go. So I hope that makes sense. Is there any more questions on these yeah. two? Does my chart change from day to day? Yes and no. Uh, that's a good question. So no, you, your birth, it's like astrology. Your birth chart is your chart. That's who you are at your core. But if you were to get a foundational transit chart, it's going to look different depending on where the planets are positioned. So your chart can be different each day, depending on what's transiting, but who you are at your core will never change. Now, uh, projectors, if you are a projector, you are the, this is the newest type. So there's going to be more and more projectors coming out. Now, they did not start until 1781. And I think about this a lot because I'm like, what does that mean that Jesus was? Because Jesus would not be a projector because projectors are meant to guide. So I'm like, if you were going to think of it, I would think that he would be that. But I think he was a reflector if I had to guess. Anyways, so now projectors are, they started about in 1781 after Uranus was discovered. It's about 20% of the population. And like I said, you, you don't have your throat, thir your sacral defined. You will have, you might not have your throat defined or um, you won't have a channel that goes up to throat. You can still have your throat defined, but you won't have a channel. Now what's unique about this is like I said, projectors are not meant to work hours, long hours. A lot of them will get burnt out, especially once you reach your Uranus opposition around age 40, 
you'll start to really burn out. If you try to overwork yourself, you're not meant to have these intense physical labor jobs. Your body needs a break. It needs to be uh, like one of my best friends is a bartender right now. And she's an emotional projector and she's, she's starting to feel it because she works these long hours and she's like, I'm having all these back pains. I'm like, yeah, because you're a projector and you're not meant to be doing this job anymore. You're going to find it. You need to find a different job. Sorry. Like you got the body's got to relax and it's got to rest. Projectors will tend to have like, um, if they're um, okay. So the house of a projector is, um, the house that they have a fence. They're a little bit locked, but guess what? There's going to be a security camera and a really high tech security camera that can just has facial recognition and zooms in and focuses in. And then if they approve of you, they'll let you in. So your aura is called focus and absorbing. So you're really meant to focus in and zoom in on people and in events and stuff like that. You're sensitive in a way where your environment really plays a role to into you. Now projectors are, their theme is called waiting for the invitation or waiting for recognition. This is difficult for projectors. That means like you're meant to wait for some kind of invitation. Now, what the heck does that mean, right? This only pertains though to um, jobs and uh, like big life decisions, relationships and things like that. You know, when it comes to sacral while responding, it's like literally you're supposed to respond to anything. Like, what do you want to eat today? Okay. Projectors don't need to be wait to be invited to know what to eat. Like they can decide what they want to eat on their own. Like that kind of thing. You know, it's not it's like the little things. Um, but the waiting for invitation or recognition. Now an invitation can be like a literal invitation or it can be like, the person staring across the room and they're giving you that look and they're like, Hey, and they're like, okay, that they're inviting you to come over because the body language you've focused on them and you're taking that invitation. It's really important to understand. And then one thing with uh, projectors too, is that the recognition is really important. So as a projector, you don't want to hear like, Hey, you did a good job today. Great. Well, what kind of job did I do? Like, can you give me a little bit more information on that? Like, what do you, what, what kind of, like you want to hear like, hey, you did a great job on that specific project and the colors you chose and the font you chose, beautiful, great job. And you're like, thanks, I guess. You know, you want to be recognized for exactly. Now, if you are a projector child, one thing is that if you were neglected as a child, projectors can really cause bitterness. So your emotional theme is success and bitterness. One thing with projectors, is that they're, they're the, the hardest type to get stuck. If they're in the not self, to get them out of the not self can be very, very difficult uh, because they're always looking for that recognition and they tend to adapt. They they will follow, they'll fall into the bad crowd quicker than like a generator or a manifester because they're looking for that recognition. So it's really important for the people that you surround yourself with to be, have your best intentions because they will be the ones that are going to give you those invitations and those recognitions. And so if they don't, you're going to be easily influenced into something else. I hope that makes sense. Um, is there any questions on projectors? Oh, and one thing with projectors too, is like the reason why you're here, the reason why they were created is because you're here to guide all of us little energy beings. They're like, usually projectors will perfect something in their life. They're going to want to master something because um, they, they're meant to guide in some kind of way or form. So like, you know, all the manifestors and generators are all the football players, but projectors are the coaches. So tend, they tend to be teachers, therapists, life coaches, things like that. Like that's the ultimate job for a projector is somebody that can guide other people. I hope that makes sense. Any questions on that? Yep. Um. Brad asks, I'm a splenic projector. Is it common to have very few friends? Well, that depends on your profile, which I did not going to get into. I did not get into today. But yes, you know what? Because projectors are more about quality over quantity. Because they like intend to like, um, like I said, if you're not in alignment with yourself, you might have a lot of friends, but you're not like any of your friends. That means you're not surrounded because you're just looking for that recognition. So yeah, it does actually, it's more common. They, they, like projectors tend to appreciate the people they have in their life a little bit more. Um, not to say that generators and manifestors don't, but like projector because those people can influence you so easily. Um, but if you are, if you have a, if you're a projector and you have a line two, let's say in your profile, you definitely will be somebody that's introverted. You'll be more, you'll tend to be more introverted than not. So that might be something too, to keep in mind. Now, reflectors, the reason why I say like, I think Jesus Christ was a reflector is because like reflectors are 
not from this planet. No, you're not, you're not an alien, but they are definitely a unique being. And they are, um, it means that you're the house on the block that lets, you know, you don't have like, a, you don't have a, you don't have a fence. You don't really have it locked. You have the door unlocked. Maybe it's shut, but like you let people come in, but you like, okay, you got 15 minutes and then you got to go. Like it's called sampling, meaning like you're meant to be, you're at the buffet table of sampling people's auras. You're meant to sample each person and then not hold on to that energy and give it back, which is very difficult for a reflector because you're open. You just take everything in all the time, but you're meant to give it out. Now, like reflectors can be, they mirror people. So one thing is that, you know, I'm not a huge fan of this person, so I'm not going to encourage you to follow her by any means, or I'm not, and if you are a big fan of her, like I'm not trying to judge, but I just don't think she's a proper reflector, but like Teal Swan is somebody that's a reflector and she uses that as her platform. She says she mirrors people. Yes, yeah, technically she is supposed to mirror people, but if you try to, you're meant to kind of become the heart of some kind of community or group. You're meant to guide other people, but you're not meant to control other people. It's kind of in a way where like people will follow you naturally. Like this is what I say, wait, I think Jesus was a reflector. And like, because you can, you can pick up on everybody. You can really see into people and they can see them into you. Like they can see themselves in you. And it's very challenging for a reflector because they never really truly know who they are. It's like, they feel, it's like, you know, how I was saying, like a manifester doesn't feel like they're like they connect with other people reflectors don't even feel human at times like they have no idea they don't understand how they're meant to gauge in life a lot and so where you live is so important like where you put what communities you surround yourself the people that you surround even more than a projector because if you you could easily be um pick up on whoever if you're dating like a ref, let's say you're dating a generator right and you're a reflector oh my god like you're gonna burn yourself out if you don't aren't aware of how energy works now, when I say like uh, for them, like their lunar cycle is the, um, uh, the the moon is their influence. So a reflector feels different every single day because the moon, how the moon is playing out, you have to get a chart and like you have to track it um, because you could be a projector one day, you could be a manifester one day, you could be a, 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 a generator one day because of how the moon is placed. And you have to really learn the cycles because once you learn the cycles of the moon and how it plays out each time, you'll start to really, then you can start making quicker decisions, but they really are meant to wait 28 days. Like if you're dating somebody, you can't say you like this person for at least a month. If somebody offers you a job, you're supposed to wait 28 days before you decide. You're like, what the heck? Like who's going to wait a month for me to decide, right? Well, I mean, if it's meant to be, they'll wait. So it's really like, you know, it's, it's, it can be very, very challenging. It's less than 1% of the population. So I'm sure I, there might be a reflector in this room, but I, and I know a few of them, but um, it, they're rare to come across and, and reflectors don't even like being told they're reflectors because they're like, great. So I'm like special. Cool. I don't want to be special. Like they don't like that kind of feeling usually. So um, I don't want to focus too much on them, but if you are a reflector, I just want to give you props because I, I know the challenges that come with it, but you are special. So suck it up, buttercup. All right, here we go. Now, um, circuitry. So this is going to be a little, so about 30 minutes. Okay, so um, this is a kind of a lot of text here, but circuitry is important because it talks about like, you know, when you look at the chart, the circuitry is all those channels, all those gates, all those centers together. This is your overall circuitry. So if you look at the hierarchy of your chart, right? It goes circuitry, streams, channels, gates. So it's kind of like, the reason why this is important is because, which I'll show on the next slide here, is it tells you how you're meant to uh, engage um, on a tribal, individual, or collective level. level. So for myself, I have a, a collective circuitry. So it means that I'm not really meant to influence people on a one-to-one -one level. I'm meant to kind of influence the collective. I'm meant to kind of broadcast my ideas and my beliefs and influence in a like I'm not meant to influence one person I'm meant to influence and collect the entire society so it, it tells you kind of it can help you guide you on like what you're meant to do in life because like for someone like myself that's really into psychology a lot of people ask me like why aren't you like a therapist why don't you be a psychologist I'm like because I don't want to have patience like I don't to to deal with somebody on a one I give readings and I love to give readings but I 
I really would prefer to like do it in a more group setting. And that's always how it's been for me. So, and when I get my voice out there, if I do a writing or a video, it tends to get a good response because I'm meant to influence societies. Now, um, there's, like I said, there's, there's seven types of circuitry, but there's three sets, the tribal collective and, uh, uh, what I just say individual. And then there's something called integration channels, which the integrated integration channels are like these four gates that create this channel. And this, it means like the whole 2027 thing has to do with integration channels, but it's somebody that tends to be selfish, but they're meant to be selfish, but not selfish in a bad way. So I just, I don't want to say that. Now, the reason why the circuitry is important too is because when I say human design is complicated, I'm not kidding. Because each of those channels, each of those gates are their own type. So there's three manifesting channels, meaning those channels when they come through like 1222 or 3536 or that 2034, they come through and like they're meant to push through. It's good to know because they the theme around them, when they're in the shadow state, they're going to create rage. When they're in the high state, they'll create you know, whatever, like the uh, piece. Now there's 22 projecting channels, which means that 22 of those channels are meant to wait for, to be invited. They're not meant to be initiated. And then there's 11 generating channels. Um, and then the, those, that definition, which I was talking about, the single split, triple split, quad split, and then the reflectors. I'll say, like I said, single and split are the most common. 10% of the population is a triple split. I'll say really quick too, if you're a triple split, you should travel. Um, triple splits tend to have a lot of like bounce off energy. Like they need different, like they're, they need kind of like different types of people to be around um, because they want to sample. They're kind of like a little bit of a, like that sampling energy. Like they want to be able to experience their environment. They're meant to go out and experience. So it's really important that you travel and see different cultures and experience different people. If you are a quad split, which is I think like 2% of the population, um, you might be into polygamy. This is like actually because like the quad splits tend to have a hard time committing to just one person. Like they want to again be around a bunch of different people because they're constantly they'll feel different around different people. So your definition does play a role. Go ahead, Jacqueline. Where where on your chart do you see what circuit you are? I don't some charts tell you, um, like like genetic matrix will say what your definition is. It says it's a definition and then it will say single split, quad split, or whatever. But when it comes, they don't tell you. That's why you gotta learn it. The ch the channels, you gotta know what's what. But I'm gonna show you right here. Here you go. So um <laughs> if you are individual, now the keynotes of this is mutation and empowerment. So individual um circuitry means like you're meant to empower one by one. And when you have individual circuitry, you really know, you're supposed to really get to know yourself. You need to know yourself because the more you empower yourself, you can empower others. There's 11 channels, which these are the channels that are individually um, influenced. So if you have a lot of channels that look like this, I'm not gonna go through every single channel, but if you have a lot of channels that look like this, then you will um, be more individual. Tribal, there's not as many, there's only seven channels, right? When you have a tribal support, when you're tribally uh, circuitry, that means like you'll tend to self-sacrifice for people. It's always about the other person. You have a really, you might have a really hard time um, putting yourself first. Like you're always going to choose the other person. And especially when it comes to family or your friends, like you'll go above and beyond for them because you'll feel like you have to, you don't know why you just feel like, Oh my God, I have to do this, but there's only seven channels, but these are pretty potent channels. And like the, if you have 27, <clears throat> 27 or 50, like this defensive channel here, it's somebody that really defends the family. So if you, you will definitely be like codependency comes out of those, that channel alone. And then the collectives are kind of the outsiders, right? So you can see this. Um, so if you look at it like individual, like the channels are more inner and then the collective is more outward. And um, it has to do with like, if you are, you see where it's pink here like that means like you might be somebody that's more abstractively driven like abstract and then if you have the more of the um uh blue or i don't know aqua whatever color that is um you'll be more based in logic you'll be more driven to want to deliver things a more logical way the other way would be more artistic or abstract if that makes sense any questions on that yep yeah julia who had asked about where on the chart do you see what a circ what circuit you are. She also asked, what about split large? Oh, split large, that's what I am, it's wonderful. 
Um, it means you need a whole channel. So if you're a split, a small split, usually in the chart, it will tell you what gate you need to feel whole. So it might say like eight or 20 or whatever. You might have like seven chan like seven gates listed. If you're a split, it means that you need a whole entire channel to make you whole. So when you're dating somebody, it will be a, a very specific channel. It might like, they might have only one gate, but it will be the channel that connects it to. So it, you most likely fight. There's like an inner conflict in you. So people that have large splits, like you probably fight between your head and your heart. Like I'm a large split. So I'm constantly like fighting my intuition and my logic side of things. It's like the best way to kind of express it. Yep. Go ahead. What if I have no circuitry groups? Then you're a reflector. Is that what it matters? Like, I don't think like if you don't have any circuitry groups, like, um, I don't know if that's possible. You'd have to be a reflector then because that means you don't have anything defined. If you have a defined center, you have some kind of circuitry. So if any of these centers are colored, you have circuitry. It doesn't mean you don't have to have all these. Let me understand. Let me, let me, this is confusing for people, but it doesn't mean you have to have all these channels. Like you might have this one and this one and this one. It's who, what you have the most of. Like if you like what why I like genetic matrix is like when you go into genetic matrix and you have a uh, if you get a membership from them, I don't know. It's like I pay like I don't know ten bucks a month or something like that. You can go in and it will tell you. It's called quantum data sets and it will show you what your circuitry is like what you have the most of so that will help you understand a little bit more not all i don't know what other program there might be i don't know what the apps deliver like i said i don't use any of the apps so any other questions on that okay cool um there's like 20 minutes i'm going to do some case studies but if people have, and then i'm going to open up questions because i thought it'd be fun to kind of show and since abraham lincoln's I've shown this one before, but I just love his chart. I think it's so fascinating. And his President's Week is coming up and, you know, his B-Day. Hey. So he's a mental projector. Now, uh, if you, the History Channel has a documentary on Lincoln. So it's, that's where I, like, I learned a lot of this stuff about him. But it's really fascinating because when he, if you see his head, his Ashna is 100% defined. Like, he has every gate. So this means it's someone that's going to be very freaking smart. Like he's going to be able to process information and mental information so quickly. And he did like he, um, he, he was a lawyer, but he never went to law school. He um, self-taught himself. He learned off of like books and with me a mental projector, he's not really meant to do physical labor. Well, his father was very much like physical labor. He would always tell the kids they have to go and do so. And he would always complain. He hated it. He hated physical labor. He hated to do the work. And when it comes to like a projector, like a really good example too for him is like waiting for recognition or that invitation. Like he, he was invited to speak at the Republican party. And if he would have said no to that invitation, he would never have been president. He was not meant, he was never even a, considered a candidate. They did not, they only invited him because they didn't think nobody would really vote for him. But because of him being invited to that, and he said yes, is the only reason why he became president because of his speech at that Republican event. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing too is like, what's fun to see is you can see they could incarnation cross of revolution, right? Now the incarnation cross, this works in a way where it's um, these top four gates. So it's a gate of revolution. Uh, this is the gate of fellowship or um, uh What's the word I'm thinking of? Youthful folly. Somebody that's really good at formalizing the problem. 14 is about prosperity and eight is making some kind of contribution. Now, one thing is like gate 49, <laughs> Dad, this is 70% of your personality. It's also an intimacy gate. So somebody that's got a really big fear of commitment. Now he married Mary Todd, but he freaked out and was like, he broke up with her before they actually got married. So it's kind of like, it's because they have such a huge fear of rejection. But with when all these gates come together, it causes this incarnation across the revolution. It's somebody that's meant to fight against the status quo. Like whatever really what the norm is, they're going to want it to be the opposite. Well, of course, he stood up against slavery, right? Which was what the norm was. And he, he civil war, hello. I mean, his energy, like think about how powerful his energy is <laughs> created a civil war. I'd be curious to know, I need to do research on other presidents. You don't have everyone's charts, but I wanted to look to see how if war and the incarnation cross has kind of played a role in that. Cause it'd be fascinating to find out, but um, you have to have the times anyways. So it, it is interesting too. And one thing is like, he would have these bouts of depression and date 60 here is like, it was 
I looked at the timing of the charts of when he would have these bouts of depression according to the documentary. And so it's usually when his root would get activated. Now gate 60 can cause de um, depression because it's about, it's really meant to be, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, it, it limits you. It stops you. It gets things like you feel like you can't, you get stuck. And so it was during these times in his life where things would get stuck and they would go into these bouts of depression. So if you've ever watched the documentary and just look at his chart, it's really fun to see how it plays out. One other thing too, is that he always had a board of advisors. He's always had a group of people to speak things out to before he made decisions, which is a mental projector. That's what he's meant to do. So um, that's kind of one example. Another example is I thought I'd do Martin Luther King because it's Black History Month. Um, and I also, because he is also one that his chart is unique because he has, um, for one thing, gate 45, it's called, it's called a royalty. It's like the king or queen energy is a voice of somebody that can gather people. And he was really good at gathering. So, and you know, he was also a preacher. So, um, Gate 22, this is supposed to be something that's connected to the angelic realm. So it's 10 people tend to be a little bit spiritual when they have gate 22. Now, one thing that's really significant with him is that he has this channel of struggle. And if you have the channel of struggle, I always use it as an example when I'm giving readings because it's really meant to be somebody that what you struggle against is what you fight for. In the shadow state, it will be somebody that always struggles. They just feel like life is a struggle. But instead, it's like taking what oppresses you or what you struggle against to stand up and finding what is worth fighting for. And so it's your it's part of your purpose. It's like really, if you have the channel of struggle, it will really guide you on what you're meant to do because it's what oppresses you, what really just pisses you off or really gets you going. It's like the activist energy will guide you on what really your meant your purpose of how you're meant to influence life. So, and one thing too, yeah, go ahead, Jacqueline. What does it mean at the top left of the chart system tropical? Oh, sorry, top right of the chart. System tropical? Oh. Yeah, right at the top of the oh, other, um, near the black. Like tropical astrology. It's not sidereal astrology. Uh, okay. Sidereal, like, like that, it's not, that's nothing. You have to worry about that. No, it's just like, okay. Uh, there are, because there are some people that use, okay, actually, I'll mention this just because this drives me nuts. Um, so, Human design, human design was given to Ra, right? Like, so this voice told him the whole story and the voice specifically said, Western astrology, you use tropical system for the human design system. It's based off the, the um, spring, you know, equinoxes and all that stuff, like how it's meant to be. There are people that have created um, sidereal or, or uh, Vedic human design. They use that kind of um, astrology system. And, uh, that's fine if you want to do that. But like, I don't know, I've looked at my charts. It, your chart will be completely different. It won't be anything for me. It was not relatable at all. I don't really like that. I don't think that like, I'm kind of like one of those, I'm very much into like structure, structure and organization. So if you like, for me, it's more about like, if that's what he was told, if that's what it was said, if some alien voice said, Hey, this is how you do the system. That's how you should do it. Um, so you know, it, it's up to you. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't do it that way. It's, it's, it, it is, I think it's like, I end up being like a, a splenic projector or something. And when I do, um, if I use the other system, but I'm like, definitely, I mean, I'm not, I'm just not, I'm not a splenic projector. So um, yeah, but, um, and he has the incarnation cross of uh, obscuration, which is like, it's meant to be, um, it's, it's taking, it's learning about the, it's learning to bridge people together in a new ethical cold. It's somebody that's really good on like really strict in morals and ethics. And of course, like I said, he was a preacher. He was very somebody that was meant to do that. And he also was very smart, which comes from this 1762, like, cause it's kind of like the ultimate scientist. It's somebody that can really pay attention to the little details and, um, and also has a way to like, words are really important for them. Somebody 62 is like kind of responsible for creating words. So like, like how they speak will also be very influential. So, okay, I have 15 minutes. Oh, I'm so proud of myself. I did it. Um, I'm going to open up for questions or if you guys have your chart and you have a question and you want to know anything, this would be the time to do that. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, let me just pull this security off in case people want to unmute themselves. But Julia asks, when I did the free chart, you suggested it looks like the charts you are showing but mine didn't have the designs or personality categories on the left side. Does that only show on paid ones? Yep. 
yeah, it's a pro membership. So that's why mine has a little bit more info information on it. You can just put up your hand, anyone, or put it in the chat if you have any other questions. This really explains a lot. Thank you so much for doing this. It's mm -hmm. beyond incredible, really. Thank you. Elizabeth, you can unmute. I didn't have a specific question, but I wanted to say thank you. Um, this is incredibly informative. And I've been to, this is not my first um, time that I've sat through Terry describing human design because I'll, I'll need it like 10 more times. It's so complex. But every time I listen to it, I'm like, this is so real, so applicable to what I go through every day and, and why am I like this or why am I like that? So it's just, it makes me feel um, justified, might be a good word, with some of my actions. So I, I always love hearing Charity speak. So thank you, Charity, for taking the time and effort to bring all of this to us. Uh, so I'm really happy. Thank you. Okay. I see Angel's hand up. So Ann L. So Angel, go ahead. Ann L. Hi. Um, I had a spiritual experience one time. I went to this uh, Pentecostal church and a few people laid their hand on me and prayed for me and I started speaking in tongue. Mm. So can you please uh, relate my experience to the topic you covered today? Also, you mentioned you are the psychologist. So uh, would you please also, if there is something you can relate to psychology, then talk about that as well. Um, I don't know if you've gotten your chart. I'd be curious to know if you have an undefined. I don't have one. I okay. don't have a chart. If you ever get one, I would be curious to know. You probably have an undefined throat. So if you have an undefined throat and somebody did that and you were able to speak, like that's the key. That would be very um influential. So, because when people have an undefined throat, you literally, you will say things sometimes that aren't even your words. Like you're like, I have no idea why I just said that, but it was because somebody wanted to speak it and they didn't. And so you picked up on that. So if you were speaking tongues, if somebody did that, it might be whoever was in the room or whatever energy or entity, you know, whatever you believe you would have been able to channel that. It's a, like, if you have an undefined throat, you're able to channel. So a psychology wise, there's not really one in that. I mean, because it's more metaphysics and science and psychology is more based in science. I mean, which is, I think is actually a downfall for psychology, but I mean, it could be too, if I was to say, you know, also if your chart, if you're a profile, if you're a left angle, meaning if you're like a, the number is bigger than the, the first, like if you're like a five, two or five, one, um, it might be too, that you bring in, you have a, the veil between this life and your past lives is thinner. So let's say you were able to speak tongues in a past life and then somebody kind of activated that for you. It could have been channeling it through that too, if that makes sense. It depends if you believe in reincarnation. Which so I speaking in tongue really happened? Do you believe speaking in tongue? I don't really think it's happened? a common occurrence. No, I don't believe so. I mean, it definitely happens. For I know it's happened for people. I've never been able to speak tongues, but I don't know. I've, um, I do, but I do know it happens. It does happen, but... It's, and you know, there's also, I mean, there's just sometimes unique experience happens. It's kind of like I was, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, what do you call it? Not authorized. Uh, what do you call it when you get certified for Reiki? What's the word? Attuned. So when I got my attunement for Reiki, my hands actually turned black for like a short second, like, and super cold. And I actually, I reached out to a lot of people to try to figure out what the phenomenon was like, what, why did that happen? Like it was weird. I looked down and it looked like my hands were made of suit, like suit, not suit, suit. Um, and, it, but somebody had said to me, it's because the power, like somehow I, how I channel energy, it was like, a, it was kind of like a, um, two, it was like contradicting to the energy I have. It was like kind of like a two magnets coming together or two positives coming together and it kind of crashed. Like if that makes sense. So some people just have unique abilities and things come in that way. Okay, can I ask you my uh, spiritual experience, uh, another one, different type? Okay, I just want to make sure I'll get uh, in here too. So just, we'll go, okay. Okay, but... uh, I was reading a book and uh, when I holding the book about reading, I suddenly felt a gentle breeze approaching me and then uh, Suddenly, there is this thought came to my head. The thought only lasted like maybe 20 seconds, 40 seconds, somewhere around that. At the end, I felt like some door is closing, 
like a car door is closing, boom, mm. like that. After that, I don't have this wall, this uh thought to come to my head anymore. And then later, I discovered the thought came to my head was the story in that chapter, just a little segment of that later chapter. And each time when I read this new chapter, exactly the same thing happened and over and over. And at some point, I thought, uh, am I crazy? Am I making something up, right? So I started writing it down in a piece of Excuse paper. me. Excuse me for interrupting, but we've only got about 10 more minutes. Okay, and a couple I'll, I'll of answer your questions. I, yeah, um, I know maybe you can asking. email her, so not to cut happened? you off. Okay, I'll, I'll answer this really, really quick because I know what she's asking. Just a quick what, answer. What happened? I don't have your chart, so I can't tell you exactly what happened, but you might have an undefined head or an open head. That means that you have an openness to it. Or if your arrows are facing right, a lot of your arrows are facing right, then that would also actually be something that would be common. So that's not surprising. I just, I don't have your chart, so I can't answer exactly, but I would say get a chart for sure. And then you can see how open you are. Okay, I, right before we continue, I'm going to, I'm going to answer Elle's question first because I saw her hand. So someone had looked at my chart before and a friend that liked to research all this. And she talked about how when you have the hanging gate, then that's where you, that's how you meet other people in these places, right? Oops, okay. I'm just going to show you. Oh, I can't. Okay, I can't. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yep, yep, I'm yep. a manifesting generator. Uh -huh. And I was just gonna, looking down here where I have all these open ones, like there's only half, they're not completed lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't does see. that mean that's where I connect? Oh, what do you? I was trying to see if what uh, does it show you what your your definition is? I'm just trying to see if I yes. can single, single. Okay, so actually, your hanging gates are not how you'll meet people. When you're singly oh. defined, it's actually your centers that influence how you meet people. Because when you're singly defined, it's the centers affect you more than the gates. So oh. you're when you're a split, you you need the gate. But if you're singly defined, oh. it's the center. Mm -hmm. So you'll be, I don't, I can't, I don't remember if whatever you have white there. So if you have, yeah, yeah. So somebody that has a defined spleen, a defined identity, or a defined root center is somebody that you're my, gonna, you're my gonna, white ones yeah. is where I'll feel their energy. Okay. Yeah. It's Thank where you. you'll want to connect with them. Yeah. Thanks. Go ahead, Brad. Uh, thank you, Charity, for the your time. I mean, it's 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 surprisingly how accurate spot on this is. As a splenic projector, some of the themes, such as I guess the negative things about yourself, mine is bitterness. Is there systems within the human design that uh, help alter that so you're not so I guess bitter or what have you to improve that flaw? Um, well, it's not a flaw, first of all. No, I don't believe well, it. <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess improve the character trait. <laughs> yeah. So this is so one thing with human design. This is where the gene keys can come in really handy. So um, when it comes to human design, they, they do talk about shadows of these gates, but they don't really go into the depths of them. Now, if you get the book, the gene keys and the gene keys is a different system. OK, so I want to make that clear. I don't want to take anything. But Richard Rudd used to be a human design teacher. He actually was like a big influence with Ra and they hung out as like together. But after Ra died, he, I don't know what, some like on some retreat and then created the gene keys. But the gene keys are based on the gates. I mean, it's like, it's the I Ching. So even if you were to get a book, like an I Ching book too, like you can dive into it or have Kandara give you a reading. Um, the She's really good with the I Ching, but they, the gene keys are really good at telling you what the shadow is of it. And it gives you a really deep dive into it. It will tell you what the repressed version of it is and what is the react uh, reactive version. Now, uh, the theory behind it is that if you read about it, like if you really deep in dive and read about it and you read about it over and over, you have to let your body kind of like process it, right? Like you can't rush it, especially as a projector, but it's supposed to influence your epigenetics. So it's supposed to help your DNA in a way kind of work itself out on its own. Now, I, I study genetics as well. So I will say like there is there has been studies on this that your thoughts do, do influence your epigenetics. You can, you can um, why? This is what happens when I don't get sleep. I'm like, uh, there's what I'm thinking right now. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, mutate, not mutate, uh, 
starts with an M. Wait. Okay, I'm gonna have to come back to that one. But the point is, is like um, you, uh, I have actually done. I've I've done a full DNA sequence of myself, and I've matched it to my chart. So there is like influence on this. And now, it, and if you look at the I Ching itself, the I Ching is actually there's 60. It, it breaks down exactly like our DNA, which is actually quite fascinating. So that's why I say don't rush it because your body's gonna kind of process it. Now, all I can say to you on a psychological aspect of this is because I've dealt with, I've worked with a lot of projectors um, and, you know, as a generator, generators tend to uh, date projectors too, for some reason. So they, they tend to migrate together. So I will say I, I'm one of my exes was a projector and he was, he was definitely a not self projector. So it's, it's something that it's more about awareness. Like you have a choice to be like, I, I believe in predetermination and fate and stuff. Right. But the whole point of it or the Greek philosophy behind uh, being deconditioned is self-awareness. Right. So when you become aware of it and you are say, this is a flaw, this is a shadow and you see it coming out, first of all, have compassion for yourself because you're already a step ahead of everybody else, because at least you know what your shadow is. And when you're in that moment, Sometimes it's not always going to be like, you're not going to be able to control it every single time. Give yourself some grace, but the more and more you recognize it and the more and more you say, Oh, I'm in that shadow state, the easier it's going to be for you to release it. And sometimes too, there has to be, um, if it's depending on where the shadow's coming from, like if it's trauma or from childhood or things like that, it could be connect connected to the vagus nerve. So there might be some physical activities you might need to do. And there's some exercises you can look into one thing too, is with the chart within the human design system, there's something called PHS. And it's, it's so, it's it like, like I said, human design is so complicated. So when you're looking at the chart, you guys, you see like, there's three levels underneath the chart. Meaning like, you don't even see, like, it's like, it's like 36.1.2.3.4.5.6. And so those, those numbers that are underneath, it's called the tone and the color and the base. Those can kind of give you some guidance on practices that you can use. So if you're looking at your chart and you were get genetic matrix, right? Like you go into interactive, anything on the colored, on the red colored side, if it says like sound or appetite or whatever, it will give you some keys points of how you can kind of work on healing. So you might be somebody that's sensitive to sound. So maybe sound healing or listening to certain frequencies will help you with those shadow states. If it's touch, maybe Reiki is what you need. Or so that's another cue that you can go into, but it's a really, I'll tell you right now, the pH PHS or the um, health aspect of human design is very complicated. It's like you have to really dive into it, but it does yeah. give you a little bit of hints of how you can. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it's so accurate because it, it touches all those points. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jacqueline. Julia has, if I wanted you to do a reading, do you base the reading off of this chart or other aspects as well? I do both. I mean, I do mostly off of the chart. Of course, that's the main key. But I sometimes look into gene keys and I'll look into um, your astrology too, because I do like the, I love astrology. So I think um, I like to see how the house plays. Sometimes if you're like, especially if you're somebody that has a lot of eighth house energy, like um, it, then your chart can be very influenced by that energy, I believe. So uh, that's just, I'm eighth house dominant. So I, I always pull some love out to those people. It's not easy. Any other? Questions? I just want to thank you for what a for a wonderful day. It was it was brilliant. It was you did such a great job. I'm so impressed. And I've had readings with her before, and just brilliant. I recommend Charity really yeah. strongly. And thank and you, I'll, Jacqueline. And I'll say this to you guys: if you are familiar with human design, like you don't have to book a, like a full reading. I have so I have two. I have different types of readings, but. There's two types I have. I've discovered your human design, which is like, usually it's a two hour reading. And that's why it's a little bit more because I really go into every little detail about human design that you may not be aware of. But if you're familiar with your chart, then you don't need that kind of reading. You can do like a focus session that's only an hour. And then like, you can just ask the questions you really want to know about. So there's a difference between, that's the difference between the type of readings that I give too. And thank you everyone for for showing up today and being part of this afternoon. That was great. Thank you very much. You guys are great. We, you're so appreciated. Um, nine people joined my meetup during this. So thank you, everybody. Charity, thank you. This was great.